Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back here today for another Kickstarter critique where I take a look at a different Kickstarter tabletop game project every weekday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and give my honest thoughts on how that project is being ran. And today, I'm very excited to check out the 12th most popular project on all of games right now. That is the Umbrella Academy, the board game. This is a cooperative board game for one to five players inspired by the world-famous comic, uh, The Umbrella Academy, The Board Game. So I do like the fact that they mentioned it's a cooperative board game. I do like the fact that they mentioned it's a one to five player board game. Um, but here's the thing. I am very interested to see what about this Kickstarter is not quite hitting the mark. Because let's dial back this onion. That's not an expression. Uh, this is a very popular comic from a, a big comic company. Big. You know, they're not DC Marvel, but they're still, you know, they're, they're sizable. And Mantic Games, who, uh, has made a lot of games before. And yet it's sitting at $47,000, not quite funded after launching this week. And that's a little bit surprising to me. Because let's be quite frank. Let's be quite frank, you and me. If there was an extra zero in between this 407, if this was $407,000, would you be surprised? And the answer is no. You probably wouldn't. You'd say, oh yeah, of course it's $407,000. This is an Umbrella Academy game. It's got a massively popular HBO Max TV show. You know, granted this is about the comics, but you get what I'm saying here. So I just get the impression that something's not going right here. Um, I'd like to know a little bit more about the game here. Is it a minis game? If it is a minis game, you should definitely show me the minis. Uh, what's the board look like? What do the components look like? I get you want to showcase the artwork, uh, but, but the fact that you're an officially licensed game... I guess you do need to differentiate between the fact of whether or not you're based on the comic or based on the TV show, but I think you could still do that while telling me a little bit more in this main image. But, anywho, uh, inspired by the world-famous Umbrella Academy created by Gerard... Why, why are we name-dropping them there? See, I feel like that's completely unnecessary. Now, granted, nobody's going to see that on the main thing, on the main marquee. Uh, they'll only see it when they click on your Kickstarter project. But I still feel like there's more information that could be conveyed here that's more important than the names of the creators... Well, maybe. I guess I shouldn't say that, because I don't know if they've made other stuff. But anywho, let's get into this. If you know it, you know it. If you don't, it's not a selling point. They should have mentioned more gameplay in the blurb. I agree with that. As always, when I go into the video, I'm thinking three things. Do I want it? Can you do it? How much is it? Let's go. Ooh. From Dark Horse Comics and Mantic Games, I knew that. creators of Hellboy the Board Game, mm -hmm. comes Umbrella Academy, a cooperative game for one to five... Now, I do like the fact they're showcasing me this is the Kickstarter exclusive box. I don't know if I necessarily like that box, but I think that's cool that they're showcasing, you know, why I need to get. Like, already, I've got a little bit of the fear of missing out. I don't want to miss out on this Kickstarter exclusive box, which is presumably going to have Kickstarter exclusive stuff. Players and easy to learn rules for all the family. Inspired nice. by and there's one thing. So you mentioned it in the first 15 seconds of the video, which I got to say kudos to, but that immediately comes to my mind. If this is a family weight game, where I could potentially play this with my family, then maybe introduce the show or something like that with my 10, 11, 12-year-old as they're getting older and they're starting to watch more mature content, then, uh, and I've never watched Umbrella Academy, so if that's wildly out of bounds, please let me know. <laughs> but but I'm just saying, I always feel like you should mention if it's a family weight game. It's the kind of thing where I'm still going to be able to play it on game night and family night, assuming you have older kids. Uh, so I'm glad they mentioned it there, but mention it on the marquee, I think. By the world-famous graphic novels by Gerard Way and Gabriel Ba, Umbrella Academy, the board game, tasks you with one simple thing, saving the world. You'll start by choosing your favorite member of the Umbrella Academy. Will it be Space Boy, Kraken, Rumor? Number so there are in-depth, intricate miniatures of these characters that I absolutely adore if I'm a fan of this series. And uh, I feel like they probably should showcase those. I feel like that would have been nicely spliced in with that picture of just the comics on the front. Five. And that's a very common tactic, to splice minis with the box with whatevers. Or seance. The choice is yours. Oh, that's a cool mini. Select wisely, though, because each character has... Play this card another... So I really want to see what these special abilities are. That one I could barely read. I'm going to try and read it as fast as I can. Ready? Select wisely, though. Give it an advantage in your hands. Game it. Play this card another hero's location. Damn it. If this card is a card, move it. Damn it. Game it. Okay. It so right now, I understand you're telling me about it, but I just like a little bit more as the gamer in me wants to know more about this game. And I hear what you're saying, but that, those are generics. I want to know, like, specific nitty-gritty stuff here. Uh, because, once again, you're not just trying to draw in fans of the comic, presumably. You're trying to draw in gamers as well, and you're going to need to show me more about gameplay. If you want to stop the apocalypse. Now, choose the villain that's trying oh. to end the world. Those are nice. But watch out, because they also have some tricks Whenever up their Whenever Hazel enters a location with a hero, that hero gains two. Dang it. Gains two wounds instead of destroying Hazel. You can send, okay. Except their sleeves. 
With danger lurking at every turn, you will all need to work together to overcome dangerous hazards that threaten to devastate the city. Defeat the hazards while trying to avoid taking wounds. Take too many, and it's game over. Nice artwork. Make the most of special advantage cards that will help you turn the tide when things get tough. More threats appear each turn until you're ready to face the final confrontation. So let me know if I'm off base on this. I want to know your honest opinion. I'm getting, like, I'm getting the vibe of what's going on, and it really does seem like you could retheme this to just about anything. It seems like it's a little bit more of a mechanical game in my mind, and less of a oh my gosh, it feels so thematic style game. Not to necessarily say that's a deal breaker, but it's just it just strikes me a little bit. Whatever they're doing in the video, it's just like yeah, I've seen I've seen stuff like this. You know, and I don't even know what that stuff is, but I've seen stuff like this. <laughs> but then again, I watch tons of these videos. And as if it wasn't difficult enough, family feuds might even get in the way of you stopping the apocalypse. Try to remember to work together, even if you don't always get along. No mission will ever play the same thanks to each villain's unique hazard cards that require different tactics to defeat and are used to create the ever-changing hazard deck. And when you've saved the world once, you can do it all over again with alternative villains and all new hazards. I heard a rumor you're going to love this game. I don't know. That video just didn't do it for me. Now here's the thing you need to go going into this. I'm not a fan. I'm not a huge fan of... Uh, I, I know nothing about the, the series. I've never known it. But I, I'm trying to go into this from the perspective of someone who is a diehard fan. And I think if they're just a diehard fan and they don't play board games, I think you immediately had them when you said easier to play. And hopefully you have a how to play video somewhere down here. That's gold. Uh, but for non-gamers, for non-fans, just for gamers, I, like nothing there was like, I, got, I gotta have this one. I gotta check this one out. It's gonna be so unique. This is what's gonna bring me into the Umbrella Academy board game. Nothing there really wowed me. But let me know what you thought about that. So I, I feel like it did a good job of capturing the fans, but I don't know. Uh, so, Twitter and Creator. The 10 years since launch, Mantic Games have revealed several completed tabletop game systems, including Hellboy, The Walking Dead, Oliver King's Warzone, Mars Attacks, and Dreadball. The obsession for making detailed miniatures simply but challenging games and great value for money products has been Mantic become a global presence in the tabletop gaming arena. Mantic Games has a strong relationship with the community and crowdfunding is extra, extra development money for... Oh, there's a lot of words here. I'm done. Uh, this is tons. So this is what I want to hear. This is honestly what I want to hear. Now, I'm a bit jaded because... Mantic Games has, like, we'll talk about that in a second. But this is good. Like, if I don't know, if I'm not a board gamer and I'm not huge into the hobby, this looks fantastic. I look totally comfortable with that. As always, we go back to the track record, though, see how many games we have out. And I'm pretty sure Hellboy is out, the board game expansions, and the dice game. Oh, that one, I put you out. So we're just double checking to see how many games they have outstanding. But this one, I do believe, is out. I think I saw it at the last convention I was at. But what I'm getting at with Mantic Games is, uh, Hellboy is their most recent game, and it is, in fact, almost in the top 1,000, which is fantastic. But I do know from past experience that a lot of their games are not anywhere near that as well. And what I'm trying to say, I'm not saying they make bad games. That's not what I want to say here. Specifying that. I have not played any of these games, so I can't speak to any of that. But I'm saying, overall, after time has been told on it, none of these games blew people away. They weren't amazing games except for potentially hellboy which looks like it could be trending that way which is fantastic but on kickstarter that scares me even more when you have done this many projects and, and what was it 22 20 so this is your 21st project and yet despite the fact this is our 21st project and we have the umbrella academy and we should presumably have a huge wave of new backers at the very beginning, who are going to say, oh my gosh, Mantic Games is making a game, I have to have it, they crush this game, they crush that game, brand loyalty. But I don't see that, and that's what concerns me. You know, if this were Mythic Games attached to Umbrella Academies, if this were Awakened Realms, other companies that have done lots and lots of minis games, do you think this would be sitting here at not quite funded? And that's all I'm trying to say there. Just, before we get to the price, always do your research. So this one, what I'm trying to say is, I would actually watch a gameplay video before I did that. Uh, because, yes, I do believe the game will come out. What about brand loyal to the IP? That's the other thing. I think that's just blind sheep. 
And I'm not saying that in a negative way. I, I, I bought things before that I knew were probably not going to be great because I was blinded by the IP. And for that, I think I still think they did a great job there. Like, quite honestly, I think they did a fantastic job there. Because if I don't know anything about board games, but I love the Umbrella Academy. Maybe I've played Catan. Maybe I've played Cards Against Humanity. So, I'm, I'm you know, I'm in that thing. Or maybe I might consider buying a Target game every once in a while. As soon as I see Mantic Games you know, has this license and they've done other things with The Walking Dead and Hellboy and this and that and the other. And then I go to their About Me and it's like, oh, we've done a billion other things. I see 21 created. I think for that, they've done a fantastic job. And that's honestly kind of while I feel like I need to bring up my mild concerns I have about the project just based on the pedigree. Because that's what this segment is. <laughs> uh, so the board game expansion is the dice game expansion. I don't think the dice game is out because I would love to uh, today we've got a quick update on how production is going. Short answer, it's going very well. We've had an update from Panda. Ooh, Panda Source, love that. Our manufacturer, not Panda Source Games, but the Panda GM, uh, the manufacturers. Our manufacturing partner production is well as your way. Our dues are for completion are March 15th and 20th, so they're keeping things up to date here. Nine comments, so it's not a flaming dumpster fire. So this one I don't believe is out either. Let's get a check. European shipping update. Firstly, sorry that we have an update before now that European shipping. We've been working in our EU orders for several months now. And uh, shipping update. Oh, so this is out. Up April 30th, June 2nd. So hopefully it's out, or otherwise they've just completely neglected people for the last eight months. Uh, for my collection, or is there a type of guy that should be a 300? Okay, so people have it. People have the game. So my package is damaged. They pick it up for it. Tried to contact you correctly, but zero response. Perhaps interested in replying here? No, they're not. Uh, because I emailed the man, it takes about missing figures response back the same day. If you didn't get a response, you may want to double check the email address. There are problems with the parcel service. So yes. And this once again, concerns me to no end. Uh, this is cause this is not that old of a Kickstarter here. This was, uh, they just shipped this, you know, mid last year. And this is just, we're not even coming back. <laughs> you got problems. You email us, you go the extra mile. Cause we will not go the extra mile for you. You can get bit. We already got your money. That's how I feel when I see something like this. Uh, so, I'm immediately... Can you do it? Yes. I do believe this game will come out. 100%. I see them at conventions. I see them set up. Uh, they... they Yes, I see them set up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop talking right now. <laughs> stop talking right now. We're going to get into this project. Uh, I have too much bias just because I've seen their booth so many times. Because I, I walk all around the convention floors all the time. And so I see their booths. And I see their games. The Umbrella Academy, the board game, inspired by the best-selling comic book series from Gerard Way and Gabrielle Back, a cooperative, easy-learn game for one to five players, each turn the count. So we're just regurgitating the stuff exact from the video, which is okay, but uh, I want the price first. Age is 14 plus. I thought you said it was family. Uh, I wonder uh, I wonder if that's just for choking hazards, potentially. One to five players, 60 minutes to play, so a nice short time period. Man to get, and I think that should be on the marquee as well. Let's go back to that main image. I feel like 60 minutes... One to five players, 60 minutes. You show off some minis right here. I think this could look way more spruced up immediately. And even if I'm not an Umbrella Academy uh, fan, get me mo potentially more interested in the game. And maybe the video hits them differently than it hit me. Because obviously this is one dude's opinion on that video, but it just it didn't have the it for me. This is an easy to learn, fast-paced board game that sees you becoming a member of the Umbrella Academy. Save the world from devastating stuff. So 75 euros, and once again, why would we possibly convert it to dollars as well? Because surely that won't be the most popular. Oh yes, it is. 390 now granted 165 wow go uk dang awesome uh, but still i'd convert that to the u.s currency which is 101 dollars. so now we are looking at a premium priced game which is what i was expecting here you know and that's like if this were a 50 dollars game i'm a lot less concerned about the pedigree of the company but when you're starting to get in the $100 range, and then that's not even factoring in shipping, and then that's not even factoring in this is not the version of the game you, you're going to want. You know that. I know that. There's presumably some other pledge level underneath here that's going to throw something in that I had no idea was even going to be thrown in, because that's just a strategy that a lot of people like to do. I watched the series but dropped it. Not a comic book guy. I'm going to watch this one uh, with my wife. I think this we we like to bounce back and forth. We'll watch a whole series through over a couple months, and then we'll so the next she'll pick something, then I'll pick something. We go back and forth until we find one we like. Uh, so the core game, Villain Miniatures, Orchestrated uh, ver orchestrated Verdatum, Extra Mission, Terminus, Extra Mission. So I'm assuming these were Stretch Goals Unlocks or something, which is why they're green. Temp. Wow, this is terrible. <laughs> Like, what? and I, I hate to be that negative. I don't know what any of this means. So there's the core game, Villain Minis, Orchestra Verdamptend. 
What does that mean? Is that an extra mission? Is that what you're trying to say? But it's its own separate bullet point, so I don't know. Terminatus. I don't know what this is either. But then it's okay. So the extra mission is Terminatus. The extra mission is attempts. Uh, but I don't know what these are. Young heroes. Maybe if you're a fan of the series, uh, the the series, you know what those mean. But to me, I'm like, what? <laughs> Time to say I don't read them. Not that I dislike the storylines. I know how that is. Uh, Space Boy number five. So great looking minis, and that's their thing. They do minis. They do minis games uh 174 cards 50 skill cards 21 cards so this is great i will say i do like how they're spotlighting all the different cards I'd like to zoom in just a little bit more once again gameplay is king you know i want to see what the card says six ally tokens 13 villain tokens two things game board uh and then we got minis mill and villain minis deluxe upgrade edition so this is the deluxe edition upgrade oh so you're showing me i see Alexa, stop! <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I've been trying. I'm. We're, we're. We're. I don't know what she's doing. So apparently, there is in fact another pledge level, a retailer edition. But it's weird because it's not the first pledge. So deluxe edition. What? So what does that mean? Deluxe edition upgrade. So I'm not quite sure what that means. Is this coming with the deluxe edition? Because the deluxe edition. Oh, is there another? No, there's only one. There's the deluxe edition. What the hell is going on? What do you mean deluxe edition upgrade? Have you explained to me that there's going to be a retailer edition somewhere in here? Uh, this is an easy to play something, lots of replay, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, you're just telling me about the deluxe edition. And then right here you say deluxe edition upgrade, which makes me think, wait, oh, so there's something else. Is there more money that I have to pay? Why is this upgrade? Are you saying that this is only going to be in the deluxe edition? Oh, I think that's what they're saying. I think they're saying it's only going to be in the deluxe edition. But as far as I know, that's the only edition. <laughs> you know, um, okay. Terminauts expansion, a new way to play, villain, super villain. Oh, so this is this is a big deal. So the Terminauts thing is a big deal. Cool. Maybe you should like extra mission. What, what, what does an extra mission do? Is that is that an extra sixty minutes? Sixty minutes? I think that's an extra sixty minutes. I don't know. A new way to play. Is it a new way to play? So is it a module, or is it just something that I add to it? And you're saying it's a new way to play because it's, the villains play differently. More information about the gameplay would be great. I get it. The minis are nice. Ooh, T's and J's. I bet that's some sort of gameplay mechanism. It's a deluxe edition upgrade. Good. Not that I was going to get any of the anything but the deluxe edition, because that's the only option, but good. Temps, ARLs, ATRL. So that's a game thing. A new way to play. So I feel like these are new villains, and then they're... Okay. Got it. Play as the young heroes. Five power cards. Uh, so this is... Oh, so these are extra characters. Got it. Plus additional daily unlocks. And so that's why the 101 price point isn't wowing me. Uh, so yeah, because I look at this as a $101 game. Because once again, we haven't even got to shipping yet. And I say, all right, what do we got? We got one, two, three, four, five minis. We got 174 cards. So stack of cards. We got some pop-outs. We got one game board. Very generic looking. And then we got, uh, so we're up to five minutes. And now we're up to 10 minis. And now we're up to 13, 15, 17, 19 minis. And then, uh, then we're getting, so yeah. And I bet this is going to look like a much more appealing package once we get past all the daily unlocks. Um, but right now, I'm, this is just so weird to me. Is that... I don't know. I don't know. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. So, about the game. How to play. Okay. I choose your villain. There's a thing. Great. Cool stuff. What do I want? I want shipping. I want gameplay video. I want quotes. How skill cards work. Game overview. Don't care. Space Boy, I don't want you just gird, reg, I don't need you regurgitating the rule booklet to me. I can click right here and get it, which is awesome. Play the demo. Excellent. That's what I want to see. Daily unlocks. So no quotes, no media, no nothing. And let, I want to go back to the uh, the board game geek page on this. I want to see was that was that a poppin' board game geek page, or was it? Mantic Games, the Umbrella Academy board game. There it is. Oh, so no, so they did not give this to any previewers. Bold choice, God. Bold choice. More info. So this is pretty much a ghost town. Brand loyalty. That's, that's, I mean, that right there. If Jamie Stegmeyer creates a board game geek page, you better believe there's going to be, it's going to be popping. You know, AEG, like, it's just, mm. they, they seem to just be like, we're just going to go straight for the mass market. We are going to make so much money selling this to people at you know 
convention X, convention Y, and convention Z. And I'm not talking about board game conventions. I'm talking about pop culture conventions. And I've talked to some people in the industry about this sort of thing. And those, those are where the bread and butter is, baby. Gen Con, Origins, that's small potatoes if you're going to Comic Cons and you actually have yourself a hot IP. Because those are the people who don't give a damn about the gameplay nearly as much as the gamers. Because they don't play that many games. You know, this is great. This is better than Clue. This is better than, uh, you know, Monopoly. This is better than, and I say that, and I'm not joking. Like, a lot of people, that's, like, the base. This is, you know, uh, day two, Pogo Ally Mini. So we're getting more stuff unlocked. And what I do is I'd recommend putting that up into the um, the the $101 pledge level. Uh, because that's, you know, that just makes it more lucrative. Also, does this come with cards? Are they just minis? Because I don't understand how they just be minis. Are they cards? Are there cards that come with this? Am I getting player cards? Am I like there's so little information that you're conveying to me, and it's just so annoying. What's the Po Guy ally? Is this like a is this a big deal? Is this a little deal? I don't care that it's just a mini. But you expect me to get get all these out and just play with them on my table and say, ha ha, Pogo's beating up magician and murderbot. No, this is not... all right. So here we go, gameplay video. And here's what I'm talking about. Like, how do you not, why is this gameplay video not on your Board Game Geek page? How is that, like, what? Like, ah, it's just, mine's there, yours is not. Come on, man. Or lass, who, or lady, like, what the hell? That's just, and then look at this rule booklet. Oh my god. Just get to the point. Wait, just give me the game components and the setup. Where's the game components and the setup? Here's the setup. Good. Um, okay, that's a great looking setup, I will say. Okay. Okay, doesn't look like a bad rule booklet. Awesome. Good to see that. Uh, this is the how to set up. How to play. Wow! The how to play is three minutes. The how to play is three minutes. Okay. Because this is when the heroes will be doing all of the cool stuff. On your turn, you can perform one action before playing on their disc. The crisis phase. I'm sure I'll be able to watch that video and I will know exactly how to play the game. I'm sure I won't have to go to the rule booklet after I watch your setup and three minute how to play video. They're both three minutes. <sighs> okay. Uh, somebody unboxed the prototype. So once again... There's an unboxing, there's a how to play, there's a how to set up, and there's a gameplay video. And Mantic Games didn't put any of that on their Board Game Geek page. They don't want to get on the hotness. This is a company that has put out 21, this is their 21st Kickstarter. They have many, many, many board games. They have The Walking Dead. They, like, like, this is... How? Like, how does that... Wait, what? It's just baffling to me. And you want to know why that extra zero isn't there? Little things like that. We're just going to completely neglect the board game crowd. And we're, gonna, we're just going to lean on the comic book crowd. And see how it goes. Because as we all know, comic books dominate Kickstarter. Oh, wait, what's that? No, it's tabletop games. Tabletop games, and then probably more tabletop games, which dominates most of the time. Okay, so next time maybe we focus more on the board gamers. All right, got it. Just it's just <sighs> U.S. friendly shipping, Australia friendly shipping. Can't, does that mean there's no VAT? Shipping is not included. Uh, calculated charge the pledge manager. Recommend waiting until the pledge manager. If any new tariffs or tax, uh, region list is shipping friendly. We'll have the VAT and customs paid for as part of the pledge. I am right now leaning towards d for this project the fact that i'm just now 24 minutes into your video finding out that the vat is free is egregious and i don't even think i use that word correctly i don't even think i pronounced the word correctly and it's still that word vat paid for you like no tax like this is so there's 
There's no vat in Australia. There's no vat in Canada. Well, I don't think vat. I don't even. It's just, it's just come on, man. Mention those things. And then convert the currencies. 23. 23, that is, um, that's the E, right? Is that the E? That's No, that's that's the pound. So 23 pounds. How much is 23 pounds? 23 pounds to dollars because you won't convert it for me. $30. So right now I'm looking at a $131 game where I am not convinced on the gameplay in any way, shape, or form. I felt like it looked like a very mechanical game, um, which makes me a little bit more concerned about the theming of the game. You know, I know the track record of the company releasing games that I'm not going to say, I've never played any of them, but are not ranked particularly highly on Board Game Geek, and they're essentially asking you to splurge $132 on this. And that's... Mm, mm. And if you go to board game conventions, you know, this is the kind of thing that you can very easily pick up without that. Because let's be honest, they've got this license. Do you think they're not going to make a boatload of this game if they can? Like, this is just, you're just, just going to sit there. Because you take, you bring it to those comic conventions. Boom. You, you showcase all the minis, all their favorite characters. Because that's what this is. That's the game. That's the game. We get the IPs. We make these absolutely drop-dead gorgeous minis. And the gameplay, that's the third thing. That's the third thing we focus on. And that's what it seems like. And hopefully, their last game, trending upward. Hopefully, that's not the case. Hopefully, this blows everybody's pants off. But at $131 risk, I just, I'm a little bit skeptical. 607 So that, that means they currently have a little bit over a 500 print run. And then 14 on the retailer pledge. Okay. So... And that's it, right? We're done? We're done, Zo? Recent challenges? Nobody cares? Different stuff? Okay. Let's check out the FAQ, the updates, comments, guy. FAQ! Why is it all in caps? That's my first question. Can I try the game? What? What? Why? 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 Why is this all in caps? When will payment be... Like, you're not talking to... So I feel like they're talking to someone's grandma right now. Because... Or grandpa. Uh, because they're yelling and they're asking questions that are very, like, obvious, I think. What does Kickstarter... What is... man? Who is manufacturing... No, that was actually a good question that I would totally... Yeah, this one I honestly... And this right here is just a prime example of little things. This is one of those things that you say to gamers, and it convinces us, because we a lot of gamers know about Pandy Manufacturing. They they are at conventions. Uh, they make very, very popular games. They have a cool little logo. And it just makes credibility. And you can also, even if they don't know, you can lean into credibility. You can say, oh, they made Pandemic. They made this. They made that. You just get those games that are at Target shelves, on Walmart shelves, and you show those and say, oh, this game's even more credible. Granted, credibility's not really what you're going for here does the pledge come in one large box yes this is so once again this is the kind of thing that why wouldn't it i want to check something real quick here okay so okay so there are no collaborators on this project as well that's very concerning to me so that makes me wonder how the updates comments are going to be all right the new villain is murder plus get on board for the next unlock hello academy members there's quite a lot to update you on today so let's get cracking first up was a very close to hitting your funding goal hooray please remember to share the project for the weekend anyway there's some really exciting stuff on the horizon so let's take a look day three unlock we will be adding this we're still continuing to add to add to pledges with our daily unlocks and today's unlock is a real game changer oh so there are these are this is a substantial gameplay this is like an expansion almost as they're trying to pitch it uh, then show me these cards in your stretch goal area. Like, why not? Like, God dang it. Remember, you are not at that comic book conventions. We're not here for minis. We're not wowed by minis. We see minis every damn day. I want to see these cards. Day four unlocks. So what's next? We've seen a few comments about the game board looking a little functional. Yeah, uh, it doesn't look very flashy. And I mentioned that as well. And I'm not against a functional board. It's just when I know... With a project like this, I expect you to lean more into the theme. Once again, I didn't get that vibe from the video. Part of the reason why the standard game, but I don't know the theme <laughs> that well. Part of the reason why the standard game board looks like a little plain was to ensure the cards and tokens really stand out when playing. However, the great thing about Kickstarter is we can listen to backers and potentially change. Uh, so, uh, so Kickstarter exclusive board is that? So that's what it's going to be. Okay, so they're going to make a change to the board. Play now on Tabletopia. And I gotta say, I will be brutally honest with you. I think that is a great 
day four unlock because it is not an extra cost to them if you really think about it unless they're giving you an extra board which i doubt they're giving you an extra board if they are that's amazing that's actually fantastic but i'm assuming they're just changing that board and saying this is the kickstarter exclusive board then this will be the regular board um but this doesn't cost them in theory anything extra because they're still just making one board unless they're making that second board another big piece of news now that you can play so this was not the the tabletopia thing was not their day one and so immediately the pro the story which i was not that impressed with their their kickstarter story becomes less impressive because then i realize on day one the most important day like no one like don't who's gonna argue with that i don't think anybody's gonna say nope day two is more important day 28 is more important no day one is the most important day and you don't have something like that up when i hear these companies like oh we didn't have the rule booklet up on day one we didn't have this up on day one it's like what come on like, if you don't do that sort of stuff on day one, like, that makes me more concerned about your rule booklet. Because, like, if you... Ugh. So, it's just... Whatevs. Whatevs. Uh, so, yeah, we got the tabletop. Because here's the thing. I don't know. If you'd rather watch the game being played, then make sure you check out the live play. This is a full... Yeah, I think people tell you... Uh, gaming play. Then make sure you check out our live playthrough from last night. Oh! So, is this... Was this not up on day one either? Was the play... Was the gameplay video not up on day one? The day three unlocked the main campaign page has been updated, by the way. That new Mazord, presumably, looks very striking with artwork on it, if indeed that is what it is. I do wonder if a round board would work well rather than square. Either way, um, so once again, this is not an exciting update. You didn't give me any questions. You didn't really give me any reason to engage at all. You didn't ask me, like, oh, what villain would you like to see? And then, oh, my God, what is this? What is this? Oh, wait. Oh, the project is canceled. This project is canceled. Son of a bitch. <laughs> well, let's just keep... So, yes, I was about to infer that they could not... I doubt they're happy with this number right here. Um, and I can, I can only imagine that Dark Horse... Think about it from Dark Horse's perspective. Dark Horse is probably like WTF. You know hbo max i don't know if hbo max i don't know if they would care but it's just sounds like you just did a successful autopsy <laughs> Kevin, don't make me laugh at this hey comments uh no in all honesty i think this is a good thing because it's just i i feel like this could probably get uh get a, a new coat of paint and have a massive relaunch because they have the minis they clearly are going to have an impressively priced game when they get to the final day because they were doing a 14 day campaign uh but yeah sitting at number 12 which i think is what they were after launch you know and there's a game like illiterati up there which has like next to no pedigree but they just have brand loyalty and it's ahead of you and this game's ahead and that game's ahead and it's just writing's on the wall because if this game slinks to ninety five thousand dollars like that's a lot of game to try and make for ninety five thousand dollars especially when you consider in the fact that they really wanted to make two versions of this game the deluxe edition and the retail edition uh and this is so it's very very interesting in the how to under step nine i think there's but once again get bent who does this backers only why why i hate this i hate this and i i crap on everybody what exactly unless you're giving away some sort of stream key or something like that why hide it because it just it just looks like what okay i know it's a very long shot but how about dead zone stats for the so pumped for this game mantic does great work hellboy is incredible and that's it's nearly in the top 1000 and that's honestly that's another thing that i think they come back and relaunch with i want to i want to go back to that because you know the rest of their track record is not particularly great and that's fine but if your last game yeah one of the top 200 thematic games of all time on board game geek like how easy was that oh that would require them to go to board game geek which they did for hellboy <laughs> but for this one like eh. um yeah so final grade on this one i i um <laughs> jesus that the, so the shipping the shipping is great let's let's it's not an f it is not an f because their shipping section uh actually for the united states of america 31 bucks that kind of sucked but it's a big box i think did i ever get a good feel for what size the box was 
Um, yeah, so it's a thick box. So 31 bucks shipping, I kind of expect that. Hmm. Great theme, good game, LOL. <laughs> Hellboy was a great game. And, and yeah, I, like, that's, and that's why I would spot like that. You know, creators of Hellboy. Top 200 thematic games of all time on Board Game Geek. You know, uh, whatever the rating is. Maybe you mentioned that rating. Just, you spot like that. Because you're 199 That's not lying at all. And, and uh, how... Uh, I just... So, Final Grade. Do I want it? Not particularly. I I felt like the game looked pretty mechanical from the video. And I'm not a fan of the IP. So, you weren't drawing me there. But I think they did do a solid enough job of spotlighting who they are. At least in the About Me section. And the video was well made. Like, it was... It was... Like, there was nothing particularly wrong with the graphics or animation it's just what they're actually showing me i was like eh. um the price not great how much you know because we're looking at 132 dollars 131 dollars but that's just because they chose the strategy of we're going to do daily unlocks we're not doing stretch goals just daily unlocks and so we're just gonna you know we're gonna have this price right here this is the price and then we're going to reveal what is all in this price as we get to there and that clearly did not work and so in the end i think this is a d you know, I'm going to give the Umbrella Academy the board game a D. I think pulling the plug on it is probably not a bad choice. I would go back. I would retool. And um, I'll be sure to check this one out day one next time to see what's, see what's up with that. But as always, if you enjoy this content, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below as I'm trying to reach 10,000 subscribers to celebrate my 10-year anniversary of making YouTube content. Also, I got to say, this is the first time someone's ever canceled the project while I've actively been doing a Kickstarter critique. So that's kind of cool. Like it was, like, And I was right there. I was like, what the hell? Uh, that's neat. But let me know in the comments below what grade you give this one. And as always, thanks for your time. Oh, and when you give me the grade, please specify whether or not you're a fan of of the comic slash TV show as well, because I think that's really valuable information as well. But as always, thanks for your time, YouTube. Bye-bye.